The fact that my profile picture for this channel looks like this means that you probably expected a video like this to come sooner or later. Well, uh, wait no longer, because <laughs> uh, here it is, the top 10 NHL mustaches of all time. Here we go. Uh, well, I'll, actually, I'll start with some honorable mentions uh, on what is maybe my most biased list ever. Uh, first honorable mention, though, I don't know that I actually think it's one of the better mustaches that there have ever been, but uh, he scored 60 goals this year, so I'll, I'll give him that. I put Austin Matthews as an honorable mention, but don't worry, there are much more. And I, I think even there are those off of this list that actually do also belong here, um, that I just, there's just so many good mustaches that they aren't here. But I decided to, to put him on here because even though his mustache may not be one of the better ones, it's definitely one of the more notable ones, and so I decided to put him here. <laughs> All right, um, and our next honorable mention had to put Philip Forsberg on there. Like, look at that engagement picture, his mustache on that. Oh, yeah, Philip Forsberg, great mustache, great recent mustache as well. Uh, yep, let's move on. Sam Bennett, yes, that's right. I put him on the honorable mentions list. Some of them I forget because there's a lot of honorable mentions, but uh, Sam Bennett, I think he deserves an honorable mention. That's a pretty good mustache he's got there. Rod Langway is our other honorable mention, and uh, yep, looking good. And then also the person that I'm always reminded of when I see Rod Langway, and that is Larry Robinson. Another great mustache. He kind of looks like Faramir in some of these pictures, but... Nonetheless, great mustache, and not to say Fermier looks bad or anything, but I'm just pointing out the uh, the uh, similarity there, you know. Anyway, our next honorable mention is John Westnick. Look at that. That is a great mustache. Very, very good. Jamie McCowan. Yep, good one there. Grant Fuhrer. Had to put Grant Fuhrer on here. That is a great mustache. Great, great mustache. Had carried on to other teams as well, as you can see that wonderful action figure of him. <laughs> and uh, the middle picture, the very, very middle picture, the middle of the middle, is him on the Maple Leafs, still rocking that mustache. So, yeah, great stuff. Our next honorable mention is Derek Sanderson. This is one I see a lot when people talk about great mustaches and... Can't disagree, Greg, or <laughs> Greg Sanderson. Derek Sanderson has a wonderful mustache, especially in these pictures. Uh, after him, we have Denise Savard. Nice, iconic mustache. Uh, good one there. After that, we have Cal Clutterbuck. I love that middle picture. Great, great. He uh, is another one I see on a lot of lists. I don't think he quite cracks the top ten, and so he's here on the honorable mentions, but... Definitely a very notable mustache. Uh, after that, we have Brian Trottier, a nice famous mustache. Probably, he probably, mm, is he the best player on this list? Uh, I guess he's technically not on the top ten list. But uh, he might be the best player that we've talked about so far and that we will talk about. Uh, most skilled of them all. Four cups with the Islanders, and he was, I would... I would say the second best player on that Islanders dynasty. I would probably put Mike Bossy ahead of him. But, uh, yeah, Brian Trache, unreal. And he won with the Penguins as well. Guy's got lots of cups, lots of cups. So, uh, yeah, his teammate is Bob Nystrom, who also makes this list. Nice, clean, clean mustache there. Very, very professional-looking mustache. Uh, so he makes the honorable mentions. Mike Brown, he's he's on here twice because he's got this mustache, which is good. Very, very hockey fighter type mustache, absolutely. And he's got this, <laughs> which is awesome. Awesome. I don't know. It reminds me of the circus, but you know what? That's great. I, I like it. I, 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 like, I cannot say anything bad about this. Like, it's just... Good on you, Mike Brown. Good on you. Now, after him comes someone who, even though this is a super biased list, I still kind of left him off because I, 
if I put him on, it would be like the most biased list of all time, which I don't know. What is it like second most biased list at this point? No, no, <laughs> like it's a biased list, but I, I didn't quite go as overboard as, uh, as you may have thought. I still kept Dirk Graham off of the top 10. I know, I know, I know he, maybe I should have put him on there actually, but <laughs> Dirk Graham, look at that. That is like as clean of a mustache as you can have. Just, oh, just so, so classy, so clean. That is Dirk Graham's mustache. Someone who actually, back when I had hockey cards as well, like I had Jamie McCowan hockey card back there. And, you know, I had Dirk Graham and I also had this guy and I kind of sometimes got him mixed up a little bit because the hockey card that I have is actually the picture with the Blackhawks jersey that you'll see next. But it's Michel Goulet, which, you know, that's got to be the only thing that <laughs> that made them <laughs> somehow get mixed up in the mind of me when I was like a little kid. <laughs> Is the fact that they had a Blackhawks jersey and a mustache because you look at the mustache, they're not very similar. Like, they're really not that similar. Also, like, look at this. Is that not, like, one of the most intimidating things that you can see in your life? Like, man, that is intimidating. That is, like, pure intimidation right there. Like, that is. <laughs> anyway, Michel Goulet, amazing player, amazing mustache. Yeah, absolutely belongs in an honorable mention. We're getting closer. We're getting closer to, like, the top 10 here because, man, Michel Goulet missing out on the top 10. There's got to be great mustaches in the top 10, right? There's got to be. If Michel, if Michel Goulet and Dirk Graham are not on there, like, yeah, we're still going. We're still going. Dave the Hammer Schultz. We have him as an honorable mention and uh, <laughs> very iconic for beating people up in... Uh, uh, as one of the, basically, if you if you were going to take the Broad Street Bullies and you were going to have one person defined as the Broad Street Bully, it probably would be Dave the Hammer Schultz, right? Like, like this guy was their main fighter. Like, this guy had over 400 minutes, over 400 penalty minutes in a season. Uh, like, this guy is is uh, the Broad Street Bully, basically, <laughs> uh, in terms of being a fighter. And uh, having that mustache just makes him so much more iconic, and so he's got to be here, right? Got to have, got to give an honorable mention to Dave the Hammer Schultz. How can he not? How can he not? Although there's other people that actually I have not given an honorable mention to, because there's just so many. There's actually so many. So I, I put Austin Matthews on here. Don't, don't, don't make that think that Austin Matthews has a better mustache as those who are not even honorably mentioned. Honorably mentioned, sorry. Uh, yeah, just, it. Austin Matthews is there because it's a very notable mustache. Notable. Maybe not uh, the best of the best, but, but notable. Like, the guy scored 60 goals this season. Like, give him, give him, give him an honorable mention, right? Anyway, Dave the Hammer Schultz. The next one... Speaking of the Toronto Maple Leafs players, this one is not going to go down well. As an honorable mention, I don't think, but I just I just could not quite put him on the list. That's Wendell Clark, of course. Great mustache. Wonderful mustache. I could agree with that, but I just I don't think it quite gets into the top 10. But every Leafs fan, I think, is you know, in disagreement with me, as well as many other hockey fans. <laughs> but hey, that's why I told you, this is a biased list. To me, this does not quite crack the top ten. And then as soon as you see the first person in the top ten, you're going to be like, what? Wendell Clark didn't beat them? No. Because this, this is where the bias happens. This is where we, we get going. And to me, this person's skill... <laughs> this is where the criteria is like starting to be like, what in the world? You just had Brian Trotche. What do you mean this person's skill gets them in the top 10? I know. It's a little bit of a cleaner mustache than Brian Trotche's though. So, but uh, when you are the fastest man in the 90s, I, uh, I can't hold you back. Mike Gartner. Mike Gartner. 
top 10 worthy. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what I have to say about that. But uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> fastest man of the 90s. I know Sergei Fedorov has, you know, a claim to being one of the fastest. But uh, in terms of the actual time set at the All-Star game that one time, <laughs> this is the fastest man of the 90s. <laughs> so, and he did it with just the most amazing mustache. <laughs> so good. Uh, at number nine, we have Dave Babbage, another pretty biased pick because I am a Canucks fan, but, uh, you know what, like, I just can't go against this. This can't, I can't leave this out of my top ten. Like, that is just an awesome, awesome mustache. Awesome mustache. Good stuff. At number eight is someone that I see higher up, usually in the list of top ten, uh, mustaches, and... I don't think he quite deserves to be that high, but I also think, of course, he should be in the top 10. And that's George Peros looking like <laughs> those headshots. They, it looks like two out of the three musketeers. He could be two out of the three musketeers. You could pull up another picture of him and just say, oh, this is the third musketeer. Like, he could be the three musketeers by himself. Like, <laughs> But anyway, Unreal Mustache, the, I think the, the headshot on the left there... Uh, that looks like, that's the one that I, makes me rank it higher. That's probably the better one, I'd say. But, uh, I don't know. You can decide. He's he, He's got a lot more pictures of mustaches. <laughs> there's, there's a lot more. Not quite the, the change that uh, Mike Brown went through, but uh, still a lot of different styles from George Peros, if, if you really want to see. If not, I, I can understand. I've, I've given you the best already, so... Don't worry about that. Number seven, another uh, Canuck, but not really a bias pick that much, I don't think, because I think this is one of the most iconic mustaches in NHL history. It is the most iconic in Canucks history, but in NHL history, like, Harold Snaps has such an amazing mustache. Like, look at that. It's just so good. It's just so good. Especially that middle picture, just awesome. Just awesome. At number six, we have Dennis Marouk. Ah, oh, that, that middle picture and then the one on the caps. Like, those are just... Look at the thickness of that mustache. Just There's just so much there. There's so much there. Uh, I just gotta... I have to have him here at six. Like, that is just... Very well done. Some of it, of course, depends on, you know, what the photographers have taken a picture of. But, <laughs> hey... You can't fake that thickness. That is awesome. Okay. Number five is someone who, of course, had to be on this list. Like, how can you leave Paul McLean off of this list? You can't. You can't. He's got to be on this list. So I have him here at number five. Um, maybe more notable for his coaching days? I don't know. I think he got more media attention. At least, well, you know, I don't know how much media attention he got back in his Jets and Blues days. But when he was coaching the Ottawa Senators, definitely a lot of media attention. He got called... Uh, was it a bug-eyed fat walrus by Brandon Prust? Which I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, I wasn't very impressed with that, but you can definitely tell, like, he's definitely got, uh, like, those whiskers and the thickness of the mustache that would definitely resemble a walrus. Like, it's just, it's a nice, big, thick mustache that's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's good stuff. And then he got attention too because that guy sitting behind him in the audience, in the crowd, had the same mustache and looked almost the same as him. He's just very, very good. But yeah, Paul McClain, you can't leave this guy off the list. That's one of the most notable mustaches in NHL history. I can't leave him off the list. Can't. Can't. Can't do it. Because it's good and it's notable and it's just... Look at it. And number four... Then just prepare yourself for this. This is this is where we go from like great mustaches to just the extraordinary, the unbelievable, the best of the best. This top four. We start off with Mel Bridgman. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that mustache. Yep. Yep. I cannot have him any lower than four. <laughs> it's just yeah. You see it, you know it. That middle picture too. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm really hoping 
that because the helmet is drawn on him and the jersey is drawn on him, I really hope nobody like erased his teeth there. I really hope that's actually how he looked when he was upset at someone and he was yelling at them. Oh man, that's hilarious. That's unreal and uh, just adds to the intimidation factor. Like, <laughs> just so good. And and yeah, and then you look at the picture, you know, in the bottom right there, and it's like the complete opposite of intimidation. It's just like, man. I'm here to shine, you know, like, it's just, yeah, Mel Bridgman, absolutely, top four material, at number three, maybe the most biased pick, because, well, you know who it's going to be after I say that, if you know who uh, my profile picture is of, but uh, number three, the most, what I think is the most underrated mustache of all time, Jeff Odgers. Yeah, absolutely. That is unreal. And like, look at that bottom right picture. Look how intimidating that mustache makes him look. Like if he's looking at me like that with that mustache, like I don't want to get punched in the face. I'm going to skate away from him. I'm going to just, you know, leave him be. <laughs> I'm going to look to avoid him on the ice because <laughs> that, that is like pure intimidation. That is uh, unreal. But yeah. You knew Jeff Hodges was going to be here. Absolutely. But yeah, I don't want to end up like Jason Strudwick, so... That, <laughs> if he sees... If I see him looking at me like that on the ice, I'm just... I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> but yeah, oh, can't get over that. Number two, I actually had Jeff Hodges at number two as well. Uh, just kidding. No, but I originally had Jeff Odgers at number two, but I switched him to number three because I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't leave Eddie Shack at number three with that. That is just a work of art. <laughs> it is just so good. Uh, yeah, I absolutely could not leave Eddie Shack off of that. That is... He's number two. He's kind of solidly number two. And, well, you know, when we get to number one, you all, you all know who he is. You know number one. I could just finish this video and not even tell you who number one was. I could just end it here. Maybe I should. Let, let me just... No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to end it here. I'll, I'll at least... Even though you know who it is, I'm going to give you some good pictures of Lanny McDonald, who uh, is universally the champion of having the greatest mustache in NHL history. There's nobody who really even contests that. And so, I mean, you know, yeah, Jeff Odgers, he's close, right? But no, <laughs> there you go. That's, uh, that's it. That's the, that's the number one pick. Absolutely. That's my list bias as it is uh and you know what as biased as it is <laughs> this is uh this last pick is obviously not a biased pick it is the only right choice that is for sure Lionel mcdonald there's no other mustache that would outperform and outshine his outperform how do you anyway <laughs> let's just end this i don't want this video to go any longer you've seen it all